cooking was my worst nightmare. I, I, when I left the kitchen, I never wanted to go back. The story of Sweet and Savory kind of has a few parts of how it began. Um, the first, if, if you kind of go back in time, when I was about 21 years old, I had started an ice sculpture business. And when I opened that business, which um, that's a, a, fun, a fun thing, but when there was a space in, in the building I was renting, the space next door to me opened up. And I had this idea for like a, a, a little cooking classroom and I drew it up on a piece of yellow legal paper. And that's how I usually write my ideas out. And I wrote it out of like how we could do this little cooking classroom. So that, that paper went into a folder I keep of ideas. And, I, and I, I think I still have that paper actually. I finally got rid of it. I left the kitchen for a number of years and was just doing the ice sculpture business. But on my birthday or any special time at my house, I would invite, when I invite people over, um, I didn't cook ahead of time. I, I would do, like, I would invite people over and say, hey, we're making burritos. Bring your favorite, your favorite uh, filling, your favorite topping or whatever. And so all my friends would just bring something. And then I just stand in the kitchen and they bring stuff and throw it on the table and I'd be like, here, here's a knife and you know, why don't you chop this stuff and here's, here's a cutting board for you and oh, let me show you how to not to cut your finger off. And, and it was just a great way to, to, to be at a table with my friends because when your hands start doing something, the conversation gets better. And the things we talk about we had, would never have come up if we were just sitting on a couch. Uh, we, one, one time we baked like 20, 20 or 40, I can't remember, it was a lot, it was a lot, pizza crust. This made, um, actually Heather helped me at that, for that party, made a bunch of pizza crusts, um, just partially baked. And I said, hey, bring your favorite topping. And I just stood there and people came and brought all their favorite toppings and threw them on the table. And, and I just sit there and show them how to sauce their pizza. And then they put their toppings on and pop them in the oven and pull them out and cut them and we'd share. And um, I remember about two months later, I got this really tall friend and I, on top of one of my cabinets, I found his plate of pizza crusts, you know, because he was hanging out over there. And, and so that was kind of like really the beginning. I learned that I, I like to do this social thing while we're cooking and teaching them and such. Um, but I wasn't really ready to turn it into a business at that point. Um, it wasn't until um, I, I had one of the biggest failures of my life. Um, and, and so when I had one of the biggest failures of my life when it came to like my business and career, I needed a job. And when I needed that job, I, I went and worked. Um, I went to uh, a guy I know, he owned, he owned this little market and bakery and then it had a tiny little cooking classroom attached to it. And so I went there and started working in the kitchen. And then my wife was also working there at the time. And so I was working in the kitchen and um, honestly at that point for me in my, in my career, cooking was my worst nightmare. I, I, when I left the kitchen, I never wanted to go back. I didn't like the hours and the lifestyle and, and those things. Um, but when you get to know Jesus, it will change your life. And he had a whole different plan for me. And so as I'm sitting in the kitchen, I mean, just honestly saying, I was cursing the Lord saying, why do you have me here um, in a really nasty way? Because I didn't, I didn't want to be in the kitchen. Um, he ended up uh, starting to nudge me, and my wife did too, they, they, nudging me into the little cooking classroom that they had. And I, I didn't want to go. But the guy who owned the place, Brian, um, he, uh, there was one time he, he really needed someone to teach a class um, so that he could spend time with his kids. And so I, I did one. And I liked it a little bit, you know. And then my wife continually convinced me I should do more and he wanted me to do more. And next thing you know, I really found that being in the kitchen, teaching people and having conversations and having the music and just kind of everything sweet and savory has become, we started, you know, I started to see it in, in a business light there um, come to life. And so I told, I remember telling Brian one day like, hey, we're moving and we are going to, um, we're, we're gonna find a new city to live in. We decided we wanted to, uh, this, by this time I'm married with, to Heather and we have, we have a baby and I said we're moving somewhere, we're gonna open our own, um, our, our own cooking classroom. And he said, why don't you just open one here in Asheville? I don't mind. I said, no, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. And, and so we sold our house, bought a motor home, traveled the country for about six months looking for a new place to live. And we ended up in Chattanooga, Tennessee and we opened uh, what is called the Sweet and Savory Classroom.